All right, everybody, welcome back to work and, oh, not work, welcome back to momentum and impulse. Today, we're going to be doing some calculus-based problems that are based on the impulse that we just learned. So let's look at this example. It says, find the impulse of the following graph. One thing that we should know, again, when we're doing impulse is equal to force times time. So if we find the area under the curve, that will give us what the impulse is. Okay, so that's something key to know with the calculus, the area under the curve. Okay, so let's figure out, I'm going to call this one, one, two, three, and then four. So let's figure out what the area is, one is. One is going to be one half base, which is one, height, which is six, so this will be three. Two is just a rectangle, so it's going to be base times height, base, which is two, height, which is six, this is 12. Three is going to be one half base times height, so this is three to five, so that's two, height is six, and then this is going to be equal to six. And then 4 is equal to 1 half base, which is 2. And the height is going to be negative 2. So then that's going to be equal to negative 2. Add all this up, 15, 21, 19. So this should be 19 uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay. Uh, okay. A key thing to know about that is the area of the force with respect to time gives us impulse. What this should also be telling us is force with respect to time uh, is going to give us uh, the impulse as well, the integral of the force with respect to time. Okay. All right, so let's look at this. A force described by force with respect to time equals to 190t minus uh, 189t squared is applied by a bat to a 0.15 kilogram ball. Assume that the ball loses contact with the ball when the force uh, decreases to zero. Over what time interval does this force act? Okay, so we should know uh, the force with respect to time is equal to 190t minus 189t squared. So we want to know at what time is the uh, force equal to zero, because that's when the force is applied. <clears throat> so 190t minus 189t squared. I'm going to bring the 189 to the other side. So 189t squared is equal to 190t. And I'm going to divide both sides by 189 uh, wait, actually, I'll divide both sides by one. Uh, let's see. I'll, yeah, I'll divide both sides by 189t. 189t. So then this t cancels out, this t cancels out with this t, and then I get time is equal to, let's see, mm -mm -mm, 190 divided by 189, which gives me one second. One. Oh, 190 divided by 189 it gives me 1.00. Oh, sorry, 1.005 seconds. So we should know at time 1.005 seconds that force is equal to zero. And also at time uh, zero seconds, the force is also equal to zero. So from zero to 1.005 seconds, the force is acting on it. 0 to 1.005 seconds. Okay. Moving on. A force described by force respect to time is equal to 190 minus 189t squared is applied by about to a 0.155 kilogram ball. The force acts over a time interval of 1.01 seconds, which we just discovered. What is the magnitude of the impulse delivered to the ball? So again, what we should know is in the integral of force with respect to time is going to give us the impulse. So if you find the integral of 190 minus 189t squared, this should help us to find what the impulse is going to be. Um, okay, so let's look at this. Uh, this is going to give us, oops. So impulse with respect to time is going to give us 190t minus 189t cubed divided by 3. Put this all over 0 to 1.01. That's the limits. Um, and now let's find what the impulse is. 190 times 1.01 minus 189 by 1. Whoops, 1.01 cubed. Divide all that by 3. And we should get around 127 kilograms times meters per second. Um, okay. 
Okay, let's look at example number six. A force described by the force with respect to time is equal to 190t uh, minus 189t squared is applied by a bat to a 0.145 kilogram ball. The force acts over a time interval of 1.01 seconds. What is the uh, magnitude of the impulse delivered to the ball? So if we know that force with respect to time is equal to 190t minus 189t squared, we should know that the integral of this will give us the impulse. Okay, so I'm going to find the integral of 190t minus 189t squared, and then this will give us the impulse. So impulse uh, is going to be equal to 190t squared divided by 2 minus 189t cubed divided by 3, putting the li limits from 0 to 1.01 seconds. Okay, and now let's find the impulse of this. So 1.01 squared uh, times 190 Divide that by 2, minus 189 times 1.01 cubed, and then dividing that by 3, and we get 32 kilograms times meters per second. Okay? All right, moving on. A force described by the force with respect to time is equal to 190t minus 189t squared is applied to a bat uh, to a 0.145 kilogram ball. The force acts over a time interval of 1.01 seconds, which we found. What is the magnitude of the average force uh, delivered to the ball? So let's try to figure out what this is going to be. So, so we're looking for the average force uh, delivered to the ball. So what we found out from the last time is we found what the, uh, oops, sorry, <laughs> we found what the impulse was. So if we're looking at this, let me change the color real quick. Uh, we found the integral of the force respect to time, 190t minus 189t squared. Uh, that gave us 190t squared divided by 2 uh, minus 189t cubed divided by 3, putting the limits from 0 to 1.01 seconds. This gave us an impulse of 32, all right, kilograms times meters per second. Now that we know this, we should know that this is equal to the force divided by time. So 32 is equal to the force times the time, which is going to give us, which they gave us as 1.01 seconds. So now let's figure out what the force is. 32 divided by 1.01, and we get a force of 31.7 newtons. That's the average force delivered by the bat, okay? Uh, 31.7 newtons, okay? Moving on. A force described by a force respect to time is equal to 190t minus 189t squared is applied to a bat for a 0.145 kilogram ball. There was impulse of 32 newton per second. Uh, this could be 32 uh, newtons second. Or, or it could be kilograms times meters per second, which I've been using. What is the velocity of the ball at time 1.1 seconds, assuming it started from rest? So once we know that impulse is equal to 32, we should also know that this is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial, okay? Because impulse is equal to change in momentum. So now we have 32 is equal to the mass, which is 0.145, Velocity final minus 0.145 times velocity initial, and it starts from rest. So now let's find what the velocity final is. 32 divided by 0.145, and we get the velocity final as 220.7 meters per second. Definitely out of the park. Pretty crazy. Okay. Okay, let's look at example number nine. A time-varying horizontal force is equal to force respect to time equal to at to the power of 4 plus bt squared acts for 0.5 seconds on a 12.25 kilogram object starting at time t equals 1 second. Okay, that's interesting. Starting at time of t equals 1 second. In the SI system, a has a numerical value of 4.5 and b has a numerical value of 8.75. What are the SI units for a and b? Okay, so this is a pretty different kind of question, but important to know about. So let's try to see if we can figure this out. So force with respect to time is going to be equal to A, which is going to be 4.5 T to the power of 4 plus B, which is 8.75 T to the power of 2. What we should know is this force here, it should be given to us in newtons. 
So this, whatever the SI units are here, it should be, whenever it's multiplied, everything should come out to be in newtons. So if that's the case, force with respect to time, this is, since this is 4.5 t to the fourth squared, this should be 4.5 newtons, uh, because this should be in newtons, divided by seconds to the power of 4, okay, times t to the fourth. Okay? And that should make sense because whatever time you plug in here, the seconds will cancel out and it'll give us newtons. Same thing when we do this one, 8.75, this should be newtons divided by seconds squared. Because whatever time we plug in for uh, the seconds here, it'll cancel out the units and it'll give us again answers in newtons. So this is what the SI units should be for A and B. Newtons per second to the fourth and newtons per second squared. Okay. Now part B, let's look at part B. What is the impulse, what impulse does this force apart, impart to the object? Okay, so again, we should know that the integral of force with respect to time will give us the impulse, so let's do that. We're gonna do 4.5 uh, times t to the fourth plus 8.75 times t squared. I'm not gonna write all the units out because we, we understand it by now, hopefully. And we should know the impulse is equal to 4.5 t to the fifth divided by 5 plus 8.75 t cubed divided by 3. And now we're going to put the limits, and this might be a little bit confusing. We're starting at time 1 second, so this is going to be at 1 second. And we're going at for 0.5 seconds. So we're going from 1 second to 1.5 second. Okay, and now let's figure this all out. Uh, so we're doing this limit, so this impulse is going to be equal to 4.5, 1.5 to the power of 5 divided by 5, plus 8.75 times 1.5 to the power of 3, divide that by 3, and we're going to subtract it by the lower limit, which is 4.5 to the power of 1, uh, I should say one, times 1 to the power of 5, divided by 5, plus 8.75 times 1 to the power of 3 divided by 3. And let's try to simplify this out as much as we can. Okay? 1.5 to the power of 5 times 4.5 divided by 5. So this is going to give us 6.83 plus 8.5 uh, let's see, 1.5 to the power of 3 times 8.75 divide that by 3, and we get 9.8. And it's going to be minus 4.5 divided by 5, which is 0 0.9, plus 8.75 divided by that by 3, and we get 2.92. Okay, so let's add all this up. 6.83 plus 9.84 uh, minus 0.9 minus 2.92 and we get 12.85 uh, kilograms times meters per second or newton per second okay newton second okay and that's our answer there okay guys thanks for watching and uh, next time we'll talk about collision